Hello and welcome. We as human beings communicate all the time. We do this by communicating with ourselves, with others and a mass. What is happening right now? That is, you watching this program on your TV sets at home is also a form of mass communication. Actually, mass communication happens with the help of technology like TV, radio and the internet which are called mass media. The mass media are thus diversified media technologies that are intended to reach a large audience by mass communication. But hey, before we go on about this interesting subject, let us tell you that the topic for today's program is the functions of mass media in society. Helping us understand these important functions is our subject expert Shikha Gandhi and I am Sakshi Madhwal. The objectives of today's programs are to gain an understanding about various roles of mass media, how mass media acts as a propaganda, how mass media persuades, how mass media sets agendas, basic principles of media literacy. Number 1. Functions of Mass Media An Introduction Mass Media Defined Communication theorists have defined mass communication as communication at a distance with technology mediating production, transmission and reception. Mass communication happens using mass media, which are broadcast media such as radio, recorded music, film and television. They transmit their message electronically. Print media, which use physical objects such as newspaper, books, pamphlets or comics to distribute their message. Outdoor media is a form of mass media that comprises billboards, signs or placards placed inside and outside of commercial buildings, sports, stadiums, shops and buses. Digital media comprises both internet and mobile mass communication. Internet provides many mass media services such as email, websites, blogs and internet-based radio and television. It is quickly becoming the center of mass media. Everything is becoming accessible via the internet. Similarly, mobile is also an interactive media but has far wider reach with 3.3 billion mobile phone users at the end of 2007 to 1.3 billion internet users. The seven mass media. This classification about the different forms of mass media became popular in the 2000s. According to it, the seven mass media are print from the late 15th century, recordings, gramophone records, magnetic tapes, cassettes, CDs, DVDs from the late 19th century, cinema from about 1900, radio from about 1910, television from about 1950, internet from about 1990, Mobile phones from about 2000. Power of mass media Communication theorists like Daniel Lerner have called mass media mobility multipliers and Wilbur Schramm has named mass media the magic multipliers. And then there are some who refer to the mass media as opiate of the masses. There is no arguing the fact that mass media is a vital aspect of human societies. But it is also a fact that early communication theorists imagined mass media as immensely powerful and even magical means of communication. After decades, we know that this is not so, mainly because of the role of the receivers in the communication process. Today, we know that by understanding mass media, we can then be able to analyze and find a deeper understanding of one's culture. This valuable and powerful ability is one reason why the field of media studies is so popular. Watching, reading and interacting with nations mass media can provide clues into how people in that country think, especially if we analyze a diverse assortment of mass media sources. If you see in the early uh, years of mass media development, the theorists have felt that mass media is more powerful. It acts like a, uh, a, a machine gun. The, the, the entire messages will be like bullets. The audiences are defenseless. But these theories 
over a period of time in like for example 1940 onwards these powerful effects theories have been uh, uh, criticized and there is a new theories have come up they say that people select messages according to their uh, upbringing culture and knowledge so this selective reception has put a question on power of media and and this has made uh, to intervene the limited effects of mass media again there are other scholars like uh, wilbur sham he says media acts as a temperature agent control i mean it controls the temperature of the society if it want to create a revolution it can create if it wanted to reduce the dilemmas it can reduce so media is powerful if we use it in a proper way and here if we talk this in indian context there is something called the scholars like again wilbur sham and daniel lerner they talk about in the development process media acts as a magic multiplier it influences the masses and their behaviors and in acts as a multiplying agent for example we have keep on seeing and witnessing if there is a one newspaper in a village many people would like to know the information from the person who is having a newspaper even if a family wanted to uh, know certain things they will depend on the the most educated or learned what i would like to tell you is that those who access media it will not be with them they will share with with others and the messages will multiply in india which has a largest um, democracy and the population and multiple identities and uh, multiple political views media holds an important uh, role and it plays a vital uh, you know instrumental in shaping the opinions and la daniel learners development model of communication in this what they were trying to say media whether it has a limited effects or a powerful effects media has an important role in influencing the minds of the people philosophical theories describing influence of mass media a brief look there are three theories to describe the influence of mass media these examine the role that mass media plays in the modern society and are the limited effects theory which was originally tested in the 1940s and 1950s states that because people usually choose what media to interact with based on what they already believe media exerts a negligible influence on masses Studies that examined the ability of media to influence voting found that well-informed people relied more on personal experience, prior knowledge, and their own reasoning as compared to mass media to make decisions about whom to vote for. The class dominant theory states that the media reflects and projects the views of a minority elite which controls it. It also explains that people who own and control the corporations that produce media comprise of this elite. Advocates of this view concern themselves particularly with ways in which big business takes over and control mass media, especially news media. Their concern is that when ownership is restricted, a few people then have the ability to manipulate what people can see or hear. For example, owners of news channels can easily avoid or silence stories that expose unethical behavior of their corporate bosses. The culturalist theory, which was developed in the 1980s and 1990s, combines the other two theories and claims that people interact with media to create their own meanings out of the images and messages they receive. This theory states that the audience plays an active rather than passive role in relation to mass media.
Number 2. The Role of Mass Media Mass media are the powerful means that do not influence today's world but also shape future generations. They play an invaluable role by influencing culture and ways in which we live, think and act. Mass media nowadays it is increased abundantly and it is catering to variety of educational information and communication needs of the society. In this we just not restricting the media to the news or sports. It gives people to socialize. Socialization process where people know about the other cultures, about their own cultures, their own society, the well-being and ethics of the society. The whole socialization process can be energized through mass media. And the other point is the information. Media is, we are now highly dependent on media because media is biggest source of information sharing and information dissemination. It can be through advertisements, it can be through the messages, even about the weather, even about the timings of the transport or about the conditions of the uh, uh, country or about the new schemes, it gives the overall information to all the uh, needs of the people. Maybe a farmer, maybe a student, maybe a woman about her health and maybe uh, a, science, a scientist who wanted to know about the new innovations. So there are a number of variety of programs to cater the needs, uh, the information needs of the people. and media interprets the issues which are happening around us because sometimes we need we cannot go to a, a, a city or maybe a best university to talk to people maybe talk to an expert we have experts media brings experts to interpret the issues and to interpret the issues that are uh, happening in our life in the education or in the professional life so this gives us an additional knowledge to enrich our lives and also media persuades. For example, the now uh, we have every year in the voting, the number of voting percentage is increasing and also the health campaigns, media is persuading. That means telling the viewer or reader more than once, again and again to make an impact in their mind, in their memory to adopt those new innovations or best ways to uh, live a uh, more uh, better life. The media message, as we know, is the total package that is being communicated through mass media. You'll find them in such places as print ads, radio and TV commercials, political ads and speeches, news stories, blogs, movie trailers, films, posters, etc. These media messages have different roles to play and many scholars have argued about and attributed different functions to them. Even so, we can classify the functions of mass media and society into Surveillance Surveillance denotes observation. It relates to information and news about happenings in society. News and documentaries are the mass media that are used for this purpose. Media observes and informs the masses about threatening actions like terrorist attacks, outbreak of epidemics, etc. to reduce possible losses. Likewise, mass media also informs and reports on misconduct and corruption. Warning surveillance occurs when the media informs us about threats from hurricanes, volcanoes, depressed economic conditions, increasing inflation or military attack. These warnings can be about immediate or chronic threats. Similarly, news of increasing deforestation, drug abuse, girl trafficking, crimes, etc. are also disseminated. News about films playing currently at local theatres, stock market prices, new products, fashion ideas, recipes and so on are examples of instrumental surveillance. Information sharing. 
this emanation of information is one of the major functions of mass media. Information provided by mass media can be opinion based, objective, subjective, primary and secondary. Informative functions of mass media lets audiences know about what is happening around them. Media disseminates information mostly through news broadcasts on radio, TV as well as through columns of newspapers or magazines. Advertisements can also play this role at times. Interpretation The mass media do not supply just facts and data but also explanations and interpretation of events and situations. Media offers various explanations correlating and interpreting information to create clarity. Unlike normal reporting, interpretation reporting provides a fair amount of analysis. News analysis, commentaries, editorials in columns are some examples of interpretative content. Linkage One of the important functions of mass media is to join together different elements of society that are not directly connected. For instance, mass advertising attempts to link the needs of buyers with the products of sellers. Similarly, by broadcasting news of those suffering from epidemic diseases or natural disasters, media can help in collecting aid for providing succor to the victims. In this way, media becomes a bridge between different groups who may or may not have a direct connection. Socialization Socialization is a process by which people are made to behave in ways that are acceptable in a particular culture or society. Through this process, we learn how to become a member of a particular society. Media is used to socialize people, especially children and newcomers, and it is used to shape our behavior, conduct, attitudes, and beliefs. <music> education Mass media provide education and information side by side. They are being used for providing education on different subjects to students across the world. Mass media does this through indirect or direct means using different forms of content. Distance education programs on TV are an example of the direct approach. Dramas, documentaries, interviews, feature stories and other knowledge-based programs are produced to educate people indirectly. Especially in developing countries, mass media is used as effective tool for mass awareness. In our country, we have been able to eradicate polio through the use of public service ads on TV. Entertainment The other important function of mass media is entertainment. It is also one of the most obvious functions of media. As we know, entertainment is a kind of performance that provides pleasure to people. Newspapers and magazines, radio, television and online media offer stories, films, serials and comics to entertain their audience. Sports, infotainment, film reviews, columns on art and fashion are other instances of entertaining content. Persuasion This is one of the most important functions of mass media. Persuasion involves influencing other minds and mass media influences audience in a variety of ways. Media messages build opinions and sets agendas in the public mind. They influence voting, change attitudes and moderate behavior. Using editorials, articles, commentaries and advertisements among others, mass media persuades varied audience. Media use a variety of techniques to persuade audience to accept their messages. The most successful messages use manipulation tactics so subtle that consumers don't even realize they are being manipulated. They do this by stirring familiar emotions. The techniques used to influence your reaction, conscious or unconscious, by mass media are as follows. Practical, emotional, associations. An example of practical persuasion technique is the use of bribery. Bribing someone to buy something because there is a reward such as a coupon, a rebate or other gift for doing so is a prime example of this persuasion technique. It works because we all like to get something for nothing. Emotional persuasion techniques use exaggeration. That is, taking a fact about a product and blowing it out of proportion. 
This is often used by drug makers trying to convince consumers that their drug will cure whatever ails them. Similarly, an example of the association persuasion technique is the use of the beautiful people are doing it. Theme. Ad makers use this technique when they make people believe they can look like the models in their ads if they use the products that they are selling. Advertising is the form of mass media which comes to mind when we talk about persuasion. But newspapers and TV programs also persuade us to take decisions about various important issues in our daily lives like eating vegetarian food versus non-vegetarian food and which political party to vote. Media literacy or being able to deconstruct media messages to understand how they are persuading us, the audience will help you make sense of the media universe better. Mass media as propaganda The mass media often serves as a tool to manufacture consent, serving the interests of political and economic elites. The propaganda model examines the pressures on news content by the powerful political and economic elites within a profit-driven system like the popular news channels. It was first introduced in 1988 in Edward S. Herman's and Noam Chomsky's Manufacturing Consent. The Political Economy of the Mass Media This model is in contrast to liberal theories that argue that journalism takes on and exposes the misdoings of the established power centres. It predicts that corporate-owned news media will consistently produce some news content that serves the interests of established power. The propaganda model argues that the raw material of news passes through five filters that ultimately shape the news audience receive. These filters determine what events are deemed newsworthy, how they are covered, where they are placed within the media and how much coverage they receive. The five filters are as follows. Concentrated ownership owner wealth of the mass media firms, advertising as primary source of income. To remain profitable, most media rely on advertising profits. It is therefore against the interest of the news media to produce content that might antagonize advertisers. Reliance on information provided by expert and official sources. Elites have the resources to routinely be on mass media news gathering processes by giving photo ops, news conferences, press releases, think tank reports and biased news pieces that take advantage of the news media's need for continuous and cheap content. This filter was clearly demonstrated during the run-up to the 2003 Iraq war when the US news media took official pronouncements at face value, refusing to investigate their accuracy. Flack as a means of disciplining the media. Flack refers to negative comments to a news story that don't work within the system. It includes complaints, lawsuits, petitions or government sanctions. This filter mobilizes the population against a common enemy like terrorism, energy insecurity, poverty etc. while demonizing opponents of state policy as insufficiently patriotic or in league with the enemy. Dominant ideology This could be anti-communism, free market economy or any other dominant ideology. The filter operates by filtering out news which goes against the dominant ideology. We saw this filter in action during the Gulf War when any good done by Saddam Hussein was filtered out by mainstream American media. Agenda setting People are influenced in how they think about issues due to the selective nature of what media choose for public consumption. An example would be Angelina Jolie's recent mastectomy. After publicly disclosing that she was getting a double mastectomy, Jolie, aided by the media, sparked a huge elevation of breast cancer in people's consciousness. This was because news media began to report on the risks of breast cancer, which in turn prompted a greater public awareness about the disease and the need for screening. This ability of the media to be able to change how the public thinks and behaves makes it very powerful. J.J. Davis states that when risks are highlighted in the media, particularly in great detail, the extent of agenda setting is likely to be based on the degree to which a public sense of outrage and threat is provoked. When wanting to set an agenda, framing can be invaluably useful to a mass media organization. Framing involves taking a leadership role in the organization of public discourse about an issue.
cultivation of perceptions. The extent to which media exposure shapes audience perceptions over time is known as cultivation. The information and ideas that people receive on a daily basis are the foundation for their own personal outlook on life. Today, we are not forming reality in a unique or personal manner. This is because so much of our information is obtained from television shows which heavily mainstreamed ideas and stereotype characters. George Kovner's cultivation theory is an important piece of work and it has to do with the idea that television has the power to shape our perceptions of reality and the world around us by affecting our attitudes and ways of thinking. Gerbner has put forward the concepts of mainstreaming and resonance to explain his hypothesis. To get a clearer grasp of how television affects different people, he broke viewers down into three categories – light, moderate and heavy viewers. Through various experiments, he discovered that despite their race or socio-economic class, people who viewed more television had more mainstreamed and homogeneous views and perceptions that were the same as those represented on television shows. One example of this is that heavy viewers from all income categories believe that fear of crime is very serious personal problem while the opinions of light viewers vary depending on their incomes. Gerbner attributed this to the fact that light viewers not only do not accept all the messages from television, but also receive information and create ideas through different outlets. On the other hand, Gerbner discovered that these heavy viewers did receive most of their information from television. So generally within these groups, differences deriving from other factors and social forces may be diminished or even absent. Mass media also makes possible the concept of celebrity. Without the ability of movies, magazines and news media to reach across thousands of miles, people could not become famous. In fact, only political and business leaders as well as the few notorious outlaws were famous in the past. Only in recent times have actors, singers and other social elites become celebrities or stars. Since the 50s, when cinema, radio and TV began to be the primary or the only source of information for a larger and larger percentage of the population, these media began to be considered as central instruments of mass control. Up to the point that it emerged the idea that when a country has reached a high level of industrialization, the country itself belongs to the person who controls communications. In today's program, we have learned the role of mass media as a persuader, how mass media is used as propaganda, and how it sets agenda for issues, etc. Happy learning and goodbye!